You're live. I'm live. I've lived long enough. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. Good. I had a dentist appointment at eight o'clock this morning, but everything's fine. Um, she just cleaned my teeth. Good. Uh, so today's theme was killer lesbians. Uh, my favorite. I forgot it was Pride Month when we planned last week's live. So that should have been a Pride themed uh, film. But here we are. The options were Women Who Kill, Butterfly Kiss, Sister My Sister, Lizzie, and Heavenly Creatures. And Heavenly Creatures won by a landslide. Mm -hmm. And you, I had already. I had also suggested to you La Ceremony with Isabelle Huppert, the Cloud Chabrol film, and Monster with Charlie Theron. I didn't choose Monster because I assumed that would win. Mm -hmm. And I didn't choose the Isabelle one because I thought people might not have access to it. But uh, no one was interested in Butterfly Kiss. Which one was the is the one with the incestual? Sister, my sister, which I voted for because I haven't seen it in years and years and years. I would have voted for that. Well, we own it if you want to watch it. Jolie Richardson and Jody May, very interesting. Uh, the maid, Jean Genet's maids, also would have been a good selection or high tension. Um, but if you'll notice, a lot of these are from a particular period in the mid '90s, and I remember reading <laughs> that drink is spicy. <laughs> Mid nineties, go ahead. Uh, I think I, I I remember a class I took on new queer cinema, and there was an article uh, that we read like in ninety four, ninety five. There was this uh, spat of films that had lesbian killers, <laughs> not directed by women. So Heavenly Creatures is from nineteen ninety four. It's directed by Peter Jackson. I believe his fourth film. Who people know for from the Lord of the Rings movies, mm -hmm, The Hobbit, etc. The story, two teenage girls share a unique bond. Their parents, concerned that the friendship is too intense, separate them and the girls take revenge. It's based on a true story. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of this movie. I thought it was excellent. Mm -hmm. It was very disturbing. Mm -hmm. I was not prepared. And the ending is like... <laughs> yeah, God. it is disturbing. So these two girls are in New Zealand. It's 1954? 53, 54. It's when the diaries are... And they're 15 years old. So Kate Winslet is Juliet mm -hmm. from Britain. And Pauline is played by Melanie Linsky. And they're from like opposite sides of the tracks. So Kate Winslet's parents are rich. The dad is some, he's working for like the school in some big capacity. And she's traveled all over the world. And Pauline's parents are like working class people. And they become fast friends. They develop an intense relationship. We can assume they're, it was lesbianic maybe. Yeah. We don't really see them do anything except lay in bed together and they kiss one time, mm -hmm. but they're also kids. So we don't know, but they, oh, you're glaring at me. Like I was having sex at 13, but anyway. I was. Um, these two girls, uh, Kate Winslet's parents, end up getting a divorce, and the mom doesn't want shit to do with her. She's like, I have a new man. I'm going to move off to Hollywood, whatever the hell she's going. And then the dad doesn't want to deal with Kate Winslet. He's like, I'm moving to... <laughs> he says, I'm moving to the UK, back to England. And she's like, I don't want to go to England. He's like, that's okay. You're going to South Africa. <laughs> to live with your auntie. But they try to couch it as like, because she has... Uh, respiratory issues and she's dealing with a bout of tuberculosis mm -hmm. so they're like well the warmer climate will be good for you so kate's going to south africa and her little girlfriend is devastated so pauline tells her parents i want to go to south africa with kate absolutely not so she tries to get a passport and they're like, no, little girl, you like, you cannot get a passport. <laughs> you were sidious little girl. So she has the bright idea to kill her mother, Pauline, the poor one, thinking that somehow that will get her ass to South Africa. Like somehow her, we never hear the dad say like, yeah, you should be able to go to South Africa. But anyway, they both agree like, yeah, we need to kill your mother. And they kill her. They beat her. Like when you're tenderizing chicken, 
-hmm. Yeah, with a damn brick. That was so upsetting. It's cool and upsetting. It was so upsetting. We're also led to, I think, kind of empathize with this woman, which makes it even worse. We can get into it, but yeah, that's the end of the film. And then we realized that like they both were convicted, but they were children. So they only spent like, what, seven? They were released in 59, I think. They didn't even spend like five, six years in like incarcerated. And then I was reading and listening to a podcast about the actual killings. And the film is obviously like someone's interpretation. There's a big fantasy component we can get to. But, you know, what I was learning from the real case versus what we actually saw is quite different. Mm -hmm. But we know that both women end up changing their names, one of whom became Anne Perry, a famous writer, writer. who wrote uh, period like murder mysteries, mur period murder mysteries. Yeah, she's. Um, that's how I was introduced to the film was because of this film, uh, some journalists unearthed her new identity. And that's when she kind of had to confront it in the media because she'd just been living this new life since she'd been released. Uh, but I, I think it was something like 60 Minutes where I remember watching with my mother who became very interested in Anne Perry and ordered a bunch of her books. And then that was how we first came to rent this film when I was a kid. I believe Anne Perry died recently. She died this past April. Yeah. yeah. And the her last book was published the day after she died. I've never, so my mom did have several of her books, but I'd never read any of them, but I'd, I'd still be curious to, there's of course a morbid fascination, but. I think both of the, so both of the young ladies, Julia, or what's her name, Pauline? What's her, uh, the actor's name? Melanie Linsky. Melanie Linsky and Kate Winslet. These are both their. Their debuts, yeah. Their debuts. This premiered at Venice. Uh, Peter Jackson won the Silver Lion. That's like a second place award. And uh, it was nominated for an Oscar for Best Screenplay. It was his wife, partner is Fran Walsh. Uh, she wrote it. Who I, when I was listening to the podcast about this, these kill, the, this movie and the killings, apparently Fran was kind of. Peter Jackson decided to make the movie because his wife was like obsessed with this story, mm -hmm. which it is fascinating. And I would, I mean, it's morbid, but I would be interested in reading the journal to see. I'd be, <laughs> well, yeah, but it's like these dum-dums that was because they were trying to make it look like an accident because clearly they thought that they were going to get to go away together. But uh, how did that look like an accident? No one questioned that. So, so I think they both did a fantastic job, but Kate Winslet, Kate Winslet, so when good. she comes up on the scene because she's new to the school, and she walks into class, and she is so obnoxious because <laughs> she's a know-it-all. So like they're in French class, and she's correcting the teacher, and the teacher's mad, and then she's in art class, and the teacher's like, "You need to pair up and do a portrait of your partner." And in their case, Juliet, Kate Winslet is drawing Melanie. And then when, when the teacher comes over, she looks at her portrait like, what did you do? Saint Which was so good because as the audience, we're like, what the hell did she just draw? And this lady drew like... St. George and the dragon. And a dragon. And she's like, well, I was thinking of putting Julie or Pauline somewhere in here. I haven't figured it out yet. Maybe on that rock. But she's so obnoxious. And then it, it's done so well because then it's like, I can see why her parents are like, yeah, send her ass to South Africa while we go somewhere else. <laughs> well, yeah, even when her mother goes to uh, Pauline's parents and be like, look, before my kid leaves, can you please let your daughter hang out with her for the last three weeks? Well, just, just because it's like, I want to be left alone. And Kate's backstory is important because we find out that she, well, first of all, so the two of them bond, Juliet and Pauline, they bond because Pauline's being bullied and then Juliet wants to be nice to her. And then they're telling stories like Kate saying, Kate, I'm having a hard time with their names because within the movie, they have multiple names. Oh, yeah, because they have this whole fantasy. They're writing a novel together. We'll and... get to it. But yeah, they have multiple names. So whatever. But Kate is telling uh, Melanie, yeah, I had to go away for years because I had chest issues and I was like in a hospital for years. And then Juliet's like, oh, yeah, well, I have like some bone disease. And so I was in the hospital for years trying to get that worked on. And she shows her her scar. And Kate tells her, well, all the best people have bad chest and bone diseases. <laughs> oh, it just clicked with me. I was trying to think. I watched a film recently where parents also left their kid behind in a similar way. And it was Club Zero from Jessica Hausner, which you haven't seen yet. But Oh, I need a coaster. But um, so when... 
Julia, Melanie invites Kate over to her house for the first time. And she's very anxious because she knows Kate is fancy and then she's not. And they all, the parents also run like a boarding house, mm -hmm. which is even more embarrassing for her and is important to the story. But when she first invites Kate over, and, and you could just tell Melody is so nervous and anxious and the parents are embarrassing them or em embarrassing her. But then the, you can tell Paul, uh, Melanie's parents don't like Kate. It, they're tolerating her. Like she's just too much. Well, she takes up so much space. Then we find Kate is telling Melanie's parents about her parents. And they, of course, know the dad because he's kind of famous. And then the mom is also notable. But then Kate is saying, well, my mom doesn't do that anymore. Now she's like a marriage counselor yeah. of some type. And then when she talks about her mom's specialty is deep therapy and how a lot of her patients really enjoy it. <laughs> but they're like, what is that? She's like, oh, I have no idea. I don't know. People really enjoy it, which is also important because we find out Kate's mom doing this deep therapy falls in love with this other man. Mm -hmm. And Kate actually catches her mom in bed with this man and threatens to tell the dad unless she gives her like a hundred pounds. And the mom is like, your dad yeah, girl, knows. your dad already knows. I'm in love with this man. We're going to live as a threesome. So like sucks for you. I thought that was a good scene. <laughs> um, okay. So you already alluded to it. The two of them, They've created this fantasy land for themselves. Mm -hmm. I forget the name of it. Bro Barovia? Something like that, yeah. And they're going to write a novel. So I think the strength of this screenplay and of the direction is how Peter Jackson is taking... Because we're told in the beginning that what we're seeing is based on Pauline's journal mm -hmm. entries. So we're getting sort of like an interpretation of what we think might have gone on. And then within that, we get these fantasy sequences. And I thought that was super interesting. Mm -hmm. um, very well done, yes. And very creepy and disturbing. And also, you know, leads us into understanding how these two young girls felt about each other. Yes, and also how they, because their novel is, it has some adult themes, right? Like there are romances and it's like, what do these little girls know about romance? It's like the Brontes. You know? So it's so interesting to hear them talk about it because it's like, where are they getting this from? Because it does sound interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I didn't finish about... Kate, Kate Winslet's backstory is that she was sick and then she had to be put away for years. So she tells the, you know, we hear that she's like, that will never happen again. I don't ever want to be left alone. And the first time we see her triggered is Kate's dad has like a conference out of town for two weeks. And the mom is like, well, I'm going, you stay home because, you know, you're not feeling well. You shouldn't be traveling. Or, or no, she goes, you don't want to miss school. But even then, it's like clearly these parents don't want to deal with her. And then we see that Kate is super upset. Mm -hmm. Like she flings herself down like a hill. And that's when we first see their fantasy land. Mm -hmm. And again, I thought that was so well done because part of that is um, like these concrete, they're like costumes that these characters are wearing. They almost look like chess pieces. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so well done. It looked really, really cool. I will say though, the first time we see their fantasy land, the CGI is... When it changes in front of their eyes. It was a little crunchy because the way it looked like on the green screen and the lighting, Kate Winslet looked like Jeffrey Jones and Howard the Duck oh when God. he transitions into the dark overlord. <laughs> She'd been sobbing. <laughs> she was all pasty and looking crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So we already know Kate has chest problems. And then one day in class, she's being like a handful. And then she's being dramatic and coughing and the teacher is like stop that stop that julia and then she coughs up blood mm -hmm. and i'm just i had to read about tuberculosis because i literally was like is tuberculosis contagious yeah but apparently it's not contagious like the flu no like you but really can, have to be in close contact you can still get and they were in close contact so then it's so crazy like because then she kate gets sent to like a home to get treatment and we're told she has to be there for like four months but those poor like all the nursing staff like they weren't wearing masks and they're all like there with these people. Yeah. 
I've been like, we're going to push it under the door and y'all figure it out. I'm not about to get TB over you. I'm sorry. <laughs> not for these wages. I'm you, not. <laughs> I feel like you've seen, you had to have seen other films where that was what they used to do with people that had TB. You go you get stuck. No, up the, I'm sure. I, well, somewhere. you know, my memory. I mean, I studied like respiratory issues and TB at some point and I, so I knew about it, but I just had forgotten it. But then it, my immediate thought is, oh, Juliet probably has TB because they were inseparable. But it turns out she's fine. It was before they were making out. Uh, the, the Jackson does something that I think Agnieszka Smoksinska did with the uh, Silent Twins, which you didn't see with Letitia Wright about the, those. Uh, two I know people. about that. Yeah, yeah. They 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 have. Uh, she attempts to also have this kind of fantasy worlds and kind of the, these animated moments. I don't think they work nearly as well as in Heavenly Creatures. The first time we see their violence is in their fantasy world while Kate is in the TB nursing home. This priest comes mm -hmm. and he's creepy and he's all up in her face talking about like clearly the medicine or, or like medicine's not working for you, but Jesus will take the wheel. And the way Kate is looking at him was so funny to me. She was so disgusted. <laughs> and she's already explained that she doesn't believe in that. And then she imagines him being like brutally killed. Mm -hmm. And that's when we realize like, oh, she has. And then they're both having these visions and they're having shared delusions. So I think it's very effective in showing that these two have a like unhealthy uh, close relationship. And just uh, also how dramatic teenagers can be, like the reaction to Orson Welles, for instance. <laughs> oh, yeah, because doesn't Kate say she kind of likes Orson Welles? And then... Melly Linsky, yeah. Oh, Mel, and then, yeah, Kate is like, oh! Disgusting, the most the, horrible man ever. He's the most ugly man I've ever seen. And she, like, flings his picture into the river. <laughs> and then they and then they go see Carol Reed's The Third Man, and, which stars Orson Welles, and then they have this kind of goofy shared delusion where the actual Orson Welles is chasing them mm -hmm. around the streets. And it looked really good. Mm -hmm. Um, we see that, so at a point, the, Kate's parents suspect that the relationship is like inappropriate. So they go to Melanie's parents and the dad gives them a, the number to a therapist, a psychiatrist. So the mom takes Melanie and the way he's talking to her is like, he's never been so disturbed because he says this little girl's a homosexual. He's like, oh, it's such a terrible word, isn't it? <laughs> so then it's like, yeah. And then we see Pauline imagining her therapist being brutally murdered and like, oh boy, like we know where this is going. At one point, Kate, because she's trying to deny that her mom is having an affair. And she says, nobody gets into mommy's drawers except daddy. <laughs> like, ooh. That's what you think, little girl. That's what you think. Mm. Then getting back to Melanie's parents having this boarding house, there's this man who, is, you know, Melanie's only 15, her character. And she looks young. And she looks young. And then this man, who, how old do you think he was? Like 30? Oh, no, he's early. He was supposed to be early 20s, I'm sure. Oh, well, he was still too old to be playing with this girl. He's being very aggressive with her and he gets caught in bed with her mm -hmm. by the dad. Mm -hmm. Like, so of course the dad kicks his ass out, but then Melanie goes and finds him and has sex with him. Mm -hmm. That was, I don't, that scene kind of threw me off a why? little bit. Well, I just didn't know why we needed to see her wanting to be sexual with him. Like, well, what do you, what purpose do you think? Well, she probably wrote in? about it. Uh, yeah, but it just feels very much like not a part of what we're focusing on. I think her sexual development, um, and she was interested in exploring that. I don't know. I did all kinds of things at that age. Oh, yeah, as you like to say all the time. Um, oh, so, okay. of course, the most upsetting part of the film is when, like, the morning they're going to kill Melanie's mom. Mm hmm and just the looks on their faces, the two of them, like, and then the mom's being really nice and they're just like, you can tell they're nervous. And then they they take the mom out for lunch and they buy like some, I, I guess they're having like tea and crumpets or something. And so there are all these little cakes and the mom is like, no, no. I don't want to eat the last one. Because I'm trying to watch my weight. And then the her own daughter pushes it towards her and says, treat yourself. 
That was so upsetting to me. It's very upsetting. <laughs> and then they take her on a walk and their plan is they're going to distract her by dropping like a gemstone, a gemstone so that the mom will bend over and pick it up. And then they're going to knock her damn lights out. Ugh. And then they show it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. pretty graphic. It's pretty graphic because both girls partake in, in bludgeoning her. And the film opens with the ending, which is that we see the girls covered in blood running um, through the woods or the bushes. So in the end, we see where that came from. That was so upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the intention. It's a very well done film. I don't have any other notes. I see your last note says, beating the mom was too much. It was too much. It was too much for me to handle. <laughs> I was very upset. Because this poor mom, and you know, I think, because I was listening to a podcast about it this morning on my drive to the dentist. And, you know, the person was saying that it feels dated. But I think it's like, we have to remember that, first of all, it was made in 1994. And it's about a story that happened in 1950 something. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, yeah, like back then, people's views on homosexuality, and it was different. So I feel like you can't hold the mom to the same standards. She probably thought, oh, my God, my child's abnormal. Mm -hmm. What a, a doctor's like a professional and not even a professional, this highly regarded man, my daughter's friend's dad has come to me to tell me something's wrong with my kid. Give me the number to a doctor. That doctor's telling me something's wrong with my kid. Like, and then I, all I know how to do is try to separate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think it, it doesn't feel, so, it's a, I think this person, the person I was listening to was young, like they were in their 20s. And it's like, well, girl, like, Boo. No. you know, you have to look at it from like 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, what? <laughs> ask your grandma about how this would have made her feel. And then you might not think it's so dated. But yeah, no, I don't I don't think it's dated at all. I think it makes sense based on the culture that they were living in. What would you give this movie? Four out of five. I was trying to think if I had any other. I one, would give it four out of five They, as well. they like Mal Ferrer, but not Orson Welles. And uh, the it opens with, I think it's the school principal who is giving me kind of Geraldine Chaplin vibes, who is the one who introduces her to the class. Oh, I, don't re I don't remember what they look like, though. Oh. But yeah, I like how the film looks. Um uh, <sighs> I, I do think Peter Jackson is one of those filmmakers, like a Tim Burton, who's kind of gotten lost in a special effects wheelhouse, maybe. Uh, he, I think he tried to attempt to kind of go back to this territory with Lovely Bones in 2009, which I don't think was a very good adaptation, but I don't know. Well, I still need to watch the Lord of the Rings movies. You, yeah. I, mean, you I don't watch want those. to, but I probably will. You like Elijah Wood. I do like Elijah Wood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'd rather rewatch? The movie where he's like a killer in downtown LA. The well, that's a remake. Maniac. Was it good? Yeah. Well, the original. You've seen the original too, because we reviewed the 4K Blu-ray of that. Oh, when, not to my not to mind. Well, you have a video out there talking about it. Um but yeah, I took you to a press screening of the remake when it came out. I remember liking that well enough. Makes downtown LA very creepy, not very hard. I'm drinking, is it Smirnoff? Mm, yeah. Smirnoff makes a tamarind flavored vodka, spicy and sweet. It's very spicy because this is half and half, like half lime soda and not so, well, soda water. It's not sweet because the actual vodka is very sweet, but it's very spicy. Oh, and what the first, <laughs> sorry, the first border we need, my note was he, uh, comes and he wants to play the record uh, in the house, and he has a Doris Day record. <laughs> he was kind of handsome. I think he was homosexual. Really? Doris oh, Day? I thought the first border was the one who tried to molest her. No, that was a different one. They looked the same. They have a, well, the style. Man I'm, in the gray flannel suit. I'm going to go through the comments. Hi, NYC. Hi, Portugal. Someone saw this movie in the theater when it came out. Um, yeah, this one was, I was not ready. I was not ready. I, I knew that a murder was coming, but yeah. It's, I mean, it, it has the effect that it should watching something like that. Nick, please rate your favorite Isabel Huppert movies. Didn't yeah. you make an Isabel video? No, we did for Sigourney. Oh, we did one for Sigourney. Well, we should make one for Isabel. Mm -hmm. Can you name three of your favorites? 
uh, well, L, things to come, and um, maybe story of women. Can you, not the piano teacher? Oh, shit, yeah, piano teacher's number one. L is a close second. Uh, I, I think I have a list on Letterboxd. What about the what about one you don't like? Dormant Beauty. Uh, That'll be a chapter in my book. And that's Bellocchio, and I, I, I like him a lot too. Anyway, Dormant Beauty. <laughs> no. Nothing, y'all should nothing re- dormant about it. Oh, well. Uh, y'all should review and watch Where the Track Ends. I have not seen that. That's giving me a Shel Silverstein memory <laughs> where the sidewalk ends. But yeah, oh. I'll have to look that up. I don't know about that. Someone saw this movie in New Zealand. Wow. <laughs> Lying in bed together to the lesbian pipeline. <laughs> there were a lot of crazy lesbian movies in the 90s, confusing mm-hmm. my sexual awakening. Yeah, what is it about these lesbians? I always thought it'd be funny to go to one of Anne Perry's book signings and bring a copy of Heavenly Creatures and see what she say. Oh. It makes me want to rewatch that six, whatever interview that was that I originally saw with her. Can you imagine she for decades has been kind of living her new life and then she has to confront that again? <laughs> I watched an interview with Gina Davis and one of the interviewers asked her if she'd ever do a sequel to Thelma and Louise. Gina was like, the hell? <laughs> yeah, like, don't you know my character is dead and gone? Or, or unless they come back as ghosts, like, or memories like Meryl Streep and Mamma Mia 2. <laughs> Um, oh, it also reminded me, Kate was an Oscar nominee the year after this movie for Sense and Sensibility. Oh, I haven't seen that. Ang Lee's, it's good. <laughs> tenderizing chicken. Sometimes, yeah, when you tenderize the chicken, it sounds like, it sounds so drastic. Well, you got to break those muscle fibers apart so it tastes good when I cook it. There should be a different way, like you roll it through a pin to flatten it and puncture it, maybe? Sure, buy that for me. Till then, I use my hands. This was Melanie Linsky's um, first. I'm happy to see her because she's been around forever. She's in Yellow Jackets. She's in Yellow, yeah, and that's she's getting a ton of attention for that. But she's, you know, she was, didn't she? Can you name another film she's been in? She's in DiCaprio. She's his wife in Don't Look Up, right? She's been all kinds of whatever in whatever that Macon Blair film that won Sundance a few years ago. She's been around for a minute. Well, since then, but... Oh, yeah, the film does say the terms of their release. uh, One of the terms of their release was that they could not contact each other. Although I wonder if, like, if you leave New Zealand, like, you can't tell me what to do. Right. So, and they left New... Well, no, the one stayed in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And then the other one left. Yeah. I can't... Yeah, what a fascinating... Like, would they want to see each other again? I don't know. Cause I, I think the most disturbing thing about this film is I actually had a, well, we didn't think about murder, but I had a very intense friendship when I was 13 in seventh grade with uh, a, a boy who was a year older. And I was kind of the Melanie Linsky part of that <laughs> relationship, but, and his parents were going to adopt me at one point. Like there was, you know, there was a dramatic time in my life, but uh, that, I was reminded of all of that again. I haven't watched this film in probably 20 years and all of those thoughts came back. Those memories came back too. Trauma dump. Okay. So the, have you seen Jude? No, which I have always wanted to watch, but I think that's based on Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. And I never read that book. So which is why I haven't watched that film. Uh, But I like Winterbottom and Kate and Jude Law. I'm glad Melanie's career is finally taking off. She got sick of playing the chubby best friend. Yeah. <laughs> All the best people are physically ill. Club Zero was at Cannes with Mia Wasikowski. Yep, I reviewed it. Oh. Uh, thank you, Jack. Wasn't it based on a true crime? Yes, indeed. Okay. Oh, this movie's not available on any streaming platform? No, it's not. I own it. Oh. Well, probably wasn't a good choice then. Well. <laughs> Me worried about La Ceremony or Lay Ceremony. Um, Which is strange. Why isn't this more widely available? I would recommend. I mean, if you like having a collection of movies, I did think, I mean, 
This was a good, this was an excellent film. Thoughts on the upcoming comedy Bottoms? Mm, just that I want to see it. Um, I, I don't know anything about it. It was a very well reviewed out of South by Southwest, I think. Jeffrey Jones. <laughs> It's so ironic that people who kill someone to stay together end up getting caught and separated anyway. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to enough de episodes of Dateline, you should know that the odds are not in your favor. Well, Joy Division said it best. Love will tear us apart. Someone has a family dinner. Please enjoy. Mm, hope it's good. I'm doing a challenge watching films from as many film, film movements as possible. Are there any recommendations for new queer cinema? Um... Derek Jarman, Tom Kalen, uh, Rose Trokey, uh, Greg Araki. Mm, I'd have to think of some more. But th those are off the top of my head. But Such a fun time for medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Ty Ford Mary. Have you reviewed Match Point with Scarlett Johansson? No, and I have been wanting to rewatch that because I haven't seen that since the year came out. And, you know, technically that's a rehash of Crimes and Misdemeanors, which I like better. Um, and you haven't seen Match Point. And I'm pretty sure Woody Allen's new film, which is being compared to Match Point, is going to be in Venice. So that'll we'll have to. I'll probably watch that. I'll probably try to get you to watch that sometime this summer. Good luck. It's have good. you watched Portrait of a Lady on Fire? Of course, yes. Uh, Celine Shiama with Ad Adele Haenel is now retired. <laughs> did you do a review of The Silent Twins? I reviewed it on Ion Cinema, but you did not watch it. I also read the book by the journalist that's based on. I have to say, I think that should have felt more like Heavenly Creatures than the film that it is. Thank you again, Jack. A Simpsons episode borrowed from this movie, Lisa Simpson takes on the Pauline role. Oh my God. The Simpsons. <laughs> I should, I mean. I, I like The Simpsons. I, I know, it's weird that I stopped watching it like. Well, it's just, go, you know, it's a song that never ends. But I don't think I've watched a Simpsons episode since 1995. Mm -hmm. Like it's been 28 years. Or no, that's more than 28 years. 18 years <laughs> since I've watched an episode of The Simpsons. Um, although I did go on The Simpsons ride at Universal Studios. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. There was no line. That was what was fun about it. <laughs> There's a great kind of recent lesbian thriller called What Keeps You Alive. Have you heard of that? I haven't. I'll have to look that up. That I Out of the poll, the one film I haven't seen is... Uh, the, what was the title? What women when women kill? I haven't seen that. I want a book on Nick's life now. <laughs> Tawdry, salacious. If you sit him down, I'm sure he'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> oops, I skipped. There are more comments than I thought. Okay. Um, Every time Joseph says something is upsetting, he does the face from the screen painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Actually, whenever I do this, I think of Macaulay Culkin and Home Alone. <laughs> actually, that was what I did yesterday when you got hit in the car. Can we talk about it? In my brand new car. I got this car on Saturday, and we're driving to this like Outfest drag bingo mm -hmm. event downtown. And we're like, what, three minutes away from the parking lot? By the Whole Foods. By the Whole Foods in downtown LA. And I'm just sitting, like, stopped, minding my business. And this car in front of me is reversing. And I'm and I'm not thinking anything because I'm in my mind, I'm like, every car has a backup camera and parking sensors. Like, he's not going to hit me. And then we're just, like, sitting there, and all of a sudden, it's like, bam. <laughs> <laughs> like we could see it happening in slow motion. Like, Watch oh, it happen God. in slow motion. And I had to pee. So I'm just like, oh. And I feel bad for the guy. Well, because we both got out of that car. <laughs> we both got out of the car. And I'm just like, yeah. It it bent my um license plate, but the license plate is still new. Like it's not, it's like the paper plate, because I don't have the real ones yet. And I did have like a custom border, but I needed to buy a new one anyway. But I felt bad for him. He looked scared. He did. Because it's a nice car and then his wasn't. And I don't know if he thought like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is not how I wanted to start my day yesterday. But there was no real damage. Um, Just inside. 
just in yeah just inside uh okay when lou reed was struggling with his sexuality his family gave him shocks i remember thinking it could have been way worse of these two girls before the murder you know that i think that makes the murder more horrific too that she melanie linsky's mom who's who's it, sarah peace who is who's also served as an acting coach on the film like she's trying to do the best thing for her kid i don't, I don't know that's what's extra heartbreaking about it too like yeah she could have been one of these terrible parents who's like yeah maybe her death wasn't so bad but i hated the lovely bones yeah what a missed opportunity because lynn ramsey was supposed to adapt that have you seen elephant by gus van sant not since i own that too not since the year it came out watch them spaced out it might help i'm assuming you're talking about the lord of the rings yeah um, no, we i can't not watch those in one sitting my personality would be maybe like one weekend when you're gone i'll just put like no because you'll i can't trust you oh you can't trust me to sit there and watch them you won't you'll you'll putter around or fast forward or not really get anything you'll be multitasking and doing several things so no that's not if you're gonna do it do it right so you can't be alone doing that. You can't just watch this like Bravo. <laughs> I'm trying to work on my attitude. <laughs> so here we go. Same. <laughs> the devil is testing me. But it's okay. You're like you're like the main character. You're like Ember in in Elemental, which I just saw today. Oh yeah, Nick watched Elemental this morning while I was getting my teeth cleaned. Mm -hmm. I want to hang out with Nick and Joseph. Can we be friends? <laughs> Yes. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Uh, yes, Lord of the Rings, please. You won't be disappointed. I'll be the judge of that. I think the first two are pretty good. Keep in mind, I don't like a whole lot of characters I have to remember. Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> here we go. I mean, it's not like War and Peace, but... Uh... Well, especially if I've, like, I'm not watching these without making a video about it. Okay. So can you picture me trying to make a video about well, you definitely, all six Lord of the Rings movies? Three. Oh, no. The Hobbit. Films. Oh, they're not related? They are. The Hobbit's technically a prequel to The Fellowship of the Rings. Oh, so I'm going to watch The Hobbit first. No, no. you want? They're not good. Yeah, but I need to get the full mm, it's fantasy. Not, it's not necessary. I believe I need to watch all six. Okay. And I'm going to do it in one. I'll do three one day and three the next day. <laughs> No, you won't. Oh, my God. And I want to make a video. And you're going to make a video? Mm -hmm. By yourself? No, not by myself. Oh, well, then I don't want to watch them like that. You don't have to watch them. You can just sit there. You don't want to watch them like back to back? No, especially not the Hobbit films. <laughs> You'll see. You put one in. You get past that 45-minute dinner sequence and then see what you feel like. <laughs> <laughs> knowing me, I'll just read the Wikipedia entry. Yeah. And I'll be like, I got the gist of it. <laughs> yeah, that's why, again. Uh, I'm stuck. Uh, have you had a chance to check out Go Go for the Gold with Johnny McGovern? No. Um, I did watch one episode. Oh. Uh, yeah. And? It's interesting, you know. Greg McKeon is one of the judges who you might remember was one of the one of the dancers on Hey Queen, mm. like one of the at the end when they do like the strip, whatever. Um, when they molest them, or like he'll show their butt or whatever. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's cool. And then we 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 see, or I mean, you go to precinct more than I do, but every time I go to precinct, I see the one uh, Zaddy. He's one of the contestants. He's one of the strippers who's always at precinct. Okay. Uh, I'm not like strippers don't really get me excited, so it wasn't enough for me to keep watching. It's but. it's an art. It's it's work. No, I would watch it. It's just that it didn't. Uh, I don't know what it's on, like what platform I saw it on, but I don't know. I haven't. I also haven't tried to watch it. I'm sure I could easily find it. Um, are we going to? Are we going to Vegas Pride? Isn't Vegas Pride like in March because it's so damn hot? I don't know when it is. Vegas Pride is not in the summer. I've never been. I've been to Palm Springs Pride. Because I lived in Vegas for seven years, and I remember Pride being like 
very early because it's hot. Because I think Phoenix Pride is also early because it's too hot to try to be outside. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, well, I probably shouldn't talk about alcohol for people who are trying or who are sober, but <laughs> I don't normally talk about alcohol, actually. And I don't like being pressured to drink. But I was just saying it because I was, it, it's very rare that I find alcohol I like. Mm. So the tamarind flavored vodka is very good. Oh, I'm so adorable. <laughs> Do you agree? Yeah, of course. Still here. Well, mm. tomorrow we're filming a video with the ladies from Diagnosing Sitcoms and Movies. Mm -hmm. Who, For people who don't know, that's such a great podcast. They are two licensed therapists and they talk about Black TV and movies, TV shows and movies, um, and kind of like give diagnoses about the characters. So tomorrow we're going to talk about waiting to exhale. So we have to watch that movie as soon as we end this video. Because tonight we're seeing Janet. Because Jackson. tonight we're seeing Janet Jackson at the Hollywood Bowl. Janet Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone uh, sees us there, please say hello. Mm -hmm. I accept all gifts. No. I mean, I all do. All gifts? Some things uh, might not be a gift. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, that's true. If I appreciated Babyface's Tiny Desk concert, can I tell y'all something? Shantae Moore, mm -hmm. that lady can sing her ass off. And I've known that for a long time. Speaking of Waiting to Exhale, she has a song on the Waiting to Exhale soundtrack that is not even in English. Like, I don't know what language she's speaking. I'll play it for you. It's not human words that we speak, but it's so good. But anyway, she you know her from R&B Divas Hollywood. Yeah. And she was married to Kenny Lattimore, God. and people say he's gay. But now he has a wife. How, Shan how Shantae got her groove back? Well, it, well, she has a song called Shantae's Got a Man. <laughs> um, but yeah, Kenny Lattimore seems a little fruity to me, but uh, Shantae can sing. Uh, I lost my place again. Melanie Linsky was great in the in this as well. Oh yeah, she was. Mm -hmm. Piano piano teachers on my watch list. Piano teacher, okay. It's a dark, disturbing movie, but I cackle every time I watch that, the things that that poor lady does to herself. <laughs> I don't remember that movie. Oh, do you don't remember her cutting, do you don't remember her sleeping in bed with her mama, cutting up, Annie Girardo cutting I think up I, I, I think I confused that movie with, there's another Isabel movie where she has to take care of her mom, but it's like newer. Things to come. Things to come. Need a scope. I think when you keep, because you keep trying to tell me that reference, I think of things to come. Oh, no. You watched, uh, we watched it when it came out on Criterion Blu-ray, because I think I reviewed it for that. Oh, Puerto Rico is under a heat wave right now. Well, I'll send you cool vibes. Um, I don't like to be hot. I don't mind being hot. Yeah, I, I, well, I like to sleep like a burrito. Like, I like to be wrapped up like a burrito, so it cannot be hot. Are you, Isabel in Mad. I like uh, Claude Chabrol's Madame Bovary, which is a really good book too. Are we reviewing Flaming Hot? You saw it. I saw it months ago, and it is heartwarming. It is also a film filled with cliches, but uh, you know, I didn't realize the lead guy. I think his name is Jesse Garcia, who we just saw. He has a brief throwaway role in the film The Mother with J Lo. He is the kid from Quinceanera. Oh. Which I could rewatch. Is he the one who does the cocaine? Yeah, he does that, <laughs> that huge, that golf ball bump size. Of... And then he gets hit by a car and flies in the air with the bouquet, the, the bridal bouquet. That doesn't, I think his performance is nice in Flaming Hot, and I think it's worth watching, but it is a little corny. Thoughts on the new Sam Smith and Madonna song, Vulgar? I haven't heard it. Uh, I heard a snippet of it. Uh, I thought the beat was cute. Um, but I, she put Madonna on her Instagram stories posted about it. And I heard the song as like a background while she was kind of dancing with her son. It had a cute little beat. If that's the song I'm thinking of, but I'll definitely check it out today. I'm not listening to any music except Janet Jackson though. Uh, sense and sensibility is great. Another tearjerker. Mm -hmm. Are we going to review the flash movie? Yeah. yeah. We're seeing it on Thursday. Yes. Uh, the, 
the screening we were going to see on Tuesday coincides with the blackening, which I'd rather see. So we'll be doing the flash on Thursday. The informant, yes. Soderbergh, who works a little too much sometimes, but he's usually interesting. Interesting. Melanie and Elijah were in I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. Yeah, I think that's the Macon Blair film uh, that won Sundance. I love La Ceremony. That was Isabel's first. Nick did give us that option, but I didn't choose it because I thought people wouldn't have access to it. Well, but then it turns out no one has access to Heavenly Creatures. Well, you, you've seen La Ceremony. I made you watch it on a birthday of mine a couple years ago. Not to my knowledge. You don't remember? With Sandrine Bonaire, whose bangs you made fun of, the illiterate maid. Oh, yes. It's an older, like 80s. 94. Is that where they kill... They kill Jacqueline Bissett and her family. Oh, no. I'm thinking of Isabel's in a movie where she is the hotel manager and the young lady is having an affair with her husband. And Isabel drives a Miata. Mama she, Weed? No. No. What? no. Isabel's husband is rich and they own like a beautiful coastal hotel. And then one of the housekeepers is this younger woman. And she it's like a Cinderella story. Oh, white as snow. White as snow. Yeah, that's not very good. But talk to me about this Asteroid City movie. Oh, hated it. Okay. No, and I watched it twice because I thought maybe I was being cranky, but I don't know. I also had a friendship like this. We're still super close, but without the murder. See, it's possible. You and I are very different in that you and I have very different upbringings. Mm -hmm. Like we have very different lives up until, except for up until we meet, and then it kind of becomes similar because we're together. But yeah, up until we meet, we have very, very different with like certain things. But like I didn't have any friends, and you had very close friends. I had very close straight male friends. Yeah, that dabbled. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any. But our, our family situation is very similar. Kind like, of like how our dads behave. Yeah. And, who we remain close with today. Yeah, but we're very, yeah. Um, have you watched Velvet Goldmine? Mm -hmm. Once. I could rewatch that. But yeah, Todd. I, oh, I really love Todd Haynes' new movie. Oh, what is that? May, December. Oh, with Juliet Moore and Julianne Moore and uh, Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman, which is this Mary Kay Letourneau thing. Do you have any movies on VHS? Yes. Yeah, we have a VHS player right in front of us. <laughs> there are a couple things that I have never, like, that's the only thing I've cut. Like, like Sigourney Weaver, for instance. Like, she did this French film called Une Femme Au Deux with Gerard Depardieu and Dr. Ruth uh, that I only have on VHS. I still have Moonwalker on yeah. VHS. I have Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation 1814, the long form video on VHS. And I have the Whitney Houston concert that she did for the troops. <laughs> Where she's wearing that Peter Pan outfit. Mm -hmm. And now that footage from that concert is now um, like popular again because she does a little dance in that green outfit. And now people are putting it to like modern music. Tony Collette kills me in Velvet Goldmine. Yeah. Does Joseph enjoy watching? Does Joseph enjoy actually enjoy? Wait, does Joseph actually enjoy watching movies when he has to take notes? Mm. I, I mean, yeah, I enjoy movies, uh, even if I have to take notes. I have seen the trailer for the new Yorgos Lent, The Most Poor Things, which will likely be in Venice. Um, that should be, after I finish what I'm reading, that'll be the next book I read. How was Killers of the Flower Moon? Fine. I thought it could have been a little stronger. I reviewed it for Ion Cinema. We won't re be reviewing it together until it gets a theatrical release and you can see it. But oh, it's, it's worth watching. I like it. I lost my place. Okay, Sisu review? Uh, I think I wrote a review for us on Fish Jelly. Oh, yeah, there's a written review on our, web on our website. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen Angel at My Table? Yes, uh, Jane Campion. Mm -hmm. that's have you seen the 1998 film Head On? Yes, that stars Sybil, is it Sybil Kelly? That's a Fatih Aiken film. That won Berlin, I think. How a Strange Way of Life at Cannes. Uh, strange way of life. I'm blinking on that right at the moment. Why? Will Ben Foster finally get Academy recognition with Long Day's Journey? Oh, 
And Jess, isn't Jessica Lang in that? I don't remember Rosario Dawson's hair in top five. I'd have to look at a picture. Oh my God, it's bad. Does she have bangs? Mm. Oh, Strange Way of Life, the Almodovar. Let me look it up. You talk amongst yourselves. The, the Almodovar. Yeah, it was very entertaining. Ethan Hawke and Pedro Pascal as the gay cowboys that are reunited lovers. It's just sad that it's only half an hour. I don't. There's clearly enough there with those two guys to have a feature length film. I don't know why he didn't do it. But yeah, Strange Way of Life was good. Rosario Dawson in top five. I can't, well, or am I thinking of her hair in Death Proof? Is it that? That's top five, yeah. Oh, where she has the one side shaved and. Uh, the bangs in. in uh, I don't mind that kind of hairstyle. I just think sometimes, like, to me, that seems kind of edgy and alt. And then, like, then people just wear sundresses. Like. <laughs> I don't like when people's head doesn't match their style, but whatever. And then the other thing is growing out hairstyles like that is a nightmare. And especially with her texture, like if she decides, oh, I want to grow my sides out again, a year from now, there's going to be like six inches of like textured hair just sticking out. And like, what do you do with that? So then to me, it's like you need to cut all of it off the same length, but they don't ever want to do that. Uh, not the new car. <laughs> no, I definitely have to send you something. <laughs> yeah, my heart sank. I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you were already trying to make it somewhere on time. So I was stressed out because I wanted to make sure we got to the event on like early. So we they made it seem like parking was limited. And then we get there. And it's like there's like an acre. Like there was literally, I don't even know how big an acre is, but if it's a lot, it was an acre. <laughs> and when we pulled in, the little uh man who was like security, what did he say? He said, welcome anytime. Like, He's like, Yeah, you're welcome here anytime. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna park here again. Uh would you would you recommend Gaspar Noe films? Yeah. Um I mean, uh, clearly he's... I've been off him ever since Irreversible. Provocative and off-putting. But Enter the Void, I think, is a masterpiece. But I also haven't watched it in years. And I don't like Love. Uh, Climax, though, was my favorite film of the year. And I think Vortex is excellent as well. Uh, again, Vortex is not an enjoyable experience to watch, but... What do, what do we think about Al Pacino and Robert De Niro having new babies? Stop, please. Okay, this is controversial because I said this once uh, at the airport. This lady, like... I was talking, this lady was talking to me and I said what I'm about to say and she was mad. I think that like I'm 44 and I think I'm too old to have kids because when I graduate high school or when they graduate high school, I'll be 62. 62 is not old though. But I'm all, I'm not fresh now. I have no energy now. So what am I going to be like in 18 years? But here's the real gag. Mm -hmm. Like my mom had me when she was young. So she's still vibrant and healthy. My mom's very healthy and active. But you think like, okay, if I have a kid now, when my kid is 30 and I'm 74, now my kid has a senior citizen ass parent who they have to worry about. And to me, it's like at that point in your life, you're supposed to be like working on your career. Maybe you're in a relationship, building your life. I should be there to be able to like, you know, like I should be there for you and like, be able to enjoy it with you and not you worrying about me like if I break a damn hip or sure uh, like I need help moving a box or I and I'm not saying that's always the case but I just think for me is too old so then you tell me like an 83 year old man but these people just got someone pregnant these people have money so it's a, it doesn't even matter those kids are going to be but that man's going to die security. while that kid is still a kid well, and that's a lot for like a 10 year old to deal with yeah. if we're lucky. But it's just, it's like Jack Nicholson, Anthony Quinn, I think had a kid in his eighties. Uh, that's, my, that's my thing. I'm not saying like, I'm just talking about myself. I, you know, you know, I'm joking that I'm not fresh, but I'm not, but I think I'm more put together than some 44 year olds. And some of y'all are out here having kids in my age and you're more decrepit than I am. So I don't know how you think, in 20, 30 years, you're going to be there to support your kid. I don't think it's fair to be in college and worry that my dad needs like his second heart surgery or that just seems like a lot. Mm -hmm. But that's coming from someone with a very young mother 
And I really am glad that like, I still have a, I mean, I feel like I have a good 10 years before I have to worry about my mom. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I, that, that is a good point. You know, when you're at a very transitional moment in your life and you have to take care of a, an ailing parent, it can really screw you over. But again, these people, you know, Al Pacino was technically too old to have those twins he had with Beverly D'Angelo. And those kids are probably... When my mom out. is 83, I'll be in my 60s. And you think uh, he's going to have a newborn... And with my and my mom at the same age, she'll have a kid who's in their sixties. Al Pacino, that's Ro crazy. Al Pacino and Robert De Niro are not changing diapers. Trust, they are not spending that kind of time with these babies anyway. I I I just I just think like yeah, I know I'm gonna get nasty comments, but but again, to each they own. If I had, if, if we had the spirit to have a kid, we would definitely adopt. I wouldn't pay money to make another human. Oh yeah, definitely. But not. I wouldn't adopt a newborn either. I would adopt like a sixteen-year-old. I don't even <laughs> want a kitten anymore. I don't want the cat we have now. I but I'm saying, if we did, I would adopt a teenager because that seems more appropriate for my age, and then I could be there. Like my energy level would match a sixteen-year-old. I could show them how to drive. They can run my errands for me. I could teach them how I like shit. Like, you know. I could teach them how I like shit. <laughs> they knew they could meal prep for me. <laughs> Have you seen Love is the Devil with Daniel Craig and Derek Jacoby? Yeah. Uh years ago I had a movie night for that when you were when we were first dating. You probably don't remember it. No. Mm -hmm. I'll do a Lord of the Rings watch party with you, Joseph. I'm going to need someone to come help me watch these movies. <laughs> the device from A Clockwork Orange. <laughs> my oh, dear. with my eyes open? Yeah. When are we seeing the blackening? Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, you talk... You Did I see that you talk watch the blackening already? If that's the case, I can't believe I remember that. I think I saw it on Instagram. This might be the first signs that my brain is starting to decompose because random facts are like popping in. <laughs> no. Have no. you seen Adrian Lyons nine and a half weeks? You know, I never have. Um, and you know, Sigourney Weaver was offered that role first before Kim. Uh, but yeah, I've never seen that and I, I need to. Uh, I have seen Mickey Rourke and Wild Orchid, another steamy erotic thriller that's not good. Have we thought about starting a Patreon? No, but I also don't know what Patreon is. I mean, I know the Patreons like people pay to get content. Yeah. I don't know. I I feel weird like being like. I think for some people it does make sense, so I don't think it's bad. But no, not at all. But but I I don't know. I feel weird asking for money. Same. I mean, I do ask for shit all the time, but I'm being funny. But I think, to, but it's like no one has to do it. But I think to say like. You have to pay to get content to me feels like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't need the money like that. I like money and you can give me money, but I don't need it to be like you have. It feels weird, but I, but not all people's Patreon is like that. I know. I know some people have a lot of free content and then they say, if you want extra, I, I just don't know enough about it. And then I don't, I know with Patreon, I'd have to commit to something. Like, now that it's free, it's like, well, if I do the video, I do. If I don't, I don't. But if I say, like, oh, your people are paying $9 a month, and then I have to commit to, like, every week we have a viewing party and every... I don't know that it would be as fun. Okay. Maybe. But, uh, like, again, maybe we get to a point where it's like, I have to do that. Because it's, like, it's already a lot to respond to comments. Like, there are too many comments for me to respond to. So maybe it would be, like, if people want to interact with us it might have to be in a paid environment well i mean right i don't know <laughs> but no i haven't thought of it yet yeah that's the, you should just watch the hobbit cartoon have you seen huesera the bone woman no but i it's i i know of it and i want to and i see that i we had a screener for it but uh i know it's on shutter now nick is protecting me from the hobbit movies don't you don't need the to. Hobbit will test you. Hobbit is rubber noses and fright wigs. Watch <laughs> me love the Hobbit movies. I don't think watch I me do. replace my letterbox. Uh, three of them be the three, three of them be the Hobbit. Movies. I would bet money that you will not, especially that last one, which is like a video. Well, don't tell me that because then I'll 
force myself to like it so I can win money. <laughs> Terminator 1984 versus RoboCop 1987. Which do you prefer? RoboCop. I would prefer RoboCop. Yeah, but I do like Terminator 1984. I prefer Terminator 2 from Jimmy Cameron. Uh, but Linda Hamilton's performance by Terminator 2 starts to get way overboard. Oh, my God. No one likes... Um, wow, people don't like The Hobbit. Okay. It's not good. It's not good. Where are the best Pride events? Well, here's for me. For me. I don't like being outside. So mm -hmm. very few pride events appeal to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't make an effort. I didn't go to WeHo Pride. LA Pride is this weekend. I'm not doing anything. Tonight is Mariah Carey. Well, well last night was Megan Thee Stallion. I would have liked to see Megan. Tonight is Mariah Carey, but of course I'm not going to miss Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, maybe I'll... Well, I thought about going out tomorrow, like go to Hot Dog, but... Or you know it's going to be crowded. Bears in space. Bears in space is going to be crowded. Yeah, but I've never been. I don't like a whole bunch of people all close to me. And... Yeah. Vegas Pride is in October this year. Mm. Oh, oh well, maybe I could go. If someone wants to sponsor my trip to Vegas, no. <laughs> Talking about I'm not going to do Patreon, but y'all can send me first class to Vegas. <laughs> We're not going to review the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse movie. He refused. He didn't want to watch it. It's hard for me to watch animation. Um, oh, the two of us. We're lovely. We seem exactly like the friends everyone would want. And try. You would think that, but we don't have a lot of friends. We don't. But is that because of us? Am I the problem? I'm it's not me. Problem. I'm the problem. <laughs> it's me. I'm, I know I'm the problem. <laughs> You're not a problem. I'm not a problem, but I think the older I get, I'm very particular, and I don't have to do a lot of things I don't want to do, so I just don't. What I want is for someone to be like, oh, I'll come over. We can watch a movie, drink wine, talk, hang out. I don't want to, like, I'm 44 years old. I don't want to be up in the club, like, drunk, dancing, shirtless. Like, that is not my vibe at all. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know. I like dancing. Yeah, you do. What is Nick drinking? Uh, diet orange sun kissed and coffee. <laughs> Hell of a combination. Hell of <laughs> I'm hydrating. <anyway>. Yes. <laughs> Your breath smells like uh, citrusy be coffee beans. <laughs> yeah, there's there's chocolate. There's orange flavored coffee chocolate, right? Someone loves the podcast. Thank you. Um, Us talking just bullshit. <laughs> yes, we're seeing Janet. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, someone subscribed to the DSM podcast because of our episode. Oh, that's good. Yeah. The, oh, God. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about the Waiting to Exhale soundtrack in our video tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I probably won't. It's going to be a long video because I'm going to try to keep those ladies as long as I can. So it'll take me a long time to edit it, but. Um, oh, you saw Janet uh, last night in Irvine. Yeah. I almost thought about doing yeah. that, but, you know. Mm. Well, because then I was thinking, like, driving to Irvine on Friday, like, would I just spend the day you in Irvine? Stay the night. Well, driving here from Irvine at night is not bad. It's just, like, I can't drive during rush hour. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to go, like, early in the day and just hang out. Or get a hotel room, and then in case I would spend the night, yeah. Um, were we fans of Michael Jackson? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Enough of more so than Prince. For me. I like Michael more than Prince. I, I like Janet a hundred times more than Michael. Same. Um, but, but yeah. He has, yeah, he has some songs that I like. Yeah. Yeah. Although every time Beat It comes on, I am, I, every time I'm like, oh, what is this song? And then it becomes Beat It, and I'm like, uh. The opening of that song. Mm. Bedroom Window. Terrible. That's a bad Isabel film. Curtis Hansen directed. <laughs> Rest in peace, Tina Turner. Yeah. Did you hear there's a remake of The Piano Teacher starring Erica Badu, John David Washington, Ray Fisher? And Actually, I think I do know that. I saw that on B. Scott's website. That no, I didn't. Well, it's not come out yet. No, I think it's in development. Maybe. If, if I'm thinking of the right thing. You know, I have the book by Elfrida Jelinek and several of her books uh, that I haven't read, but 
Uh, I'm not seeing Beyonce unless someone gives me a ticket. We have seen Beyonce. I've seen Beyonce more than once, and I've met Beyonce. I have a picture of Beyonce that I don't know where that went, but uh, the more disturbing. Uh, I like to sleep like a burrito. Yes. I can't get through a live stream without mentioning J-Lo. I am, uh, unfortunately. Best vacation together and why? Well. <laughs> hmm. Well, I always say the same thing, but then that, it really wasn't a vacation because I was already living there. You were coming to see me in Miami. Oh, that was nice. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really mean a vacation. It was. I did enjoy war, uh, Poland. I enjoyed Poland as well. Um, Warsaw, particularly. Yeah. Yeah. Or specifically, I mean. Uh, Thank you, Selena. What reviews are coming up? Uh, well, Asteroid City, Ugh. Waiting to Exhale, The Blackening, The, blackening, the, the Flash, Flash, Indiana Jones, Indiana and, Jones, and the Dial Tone of Destiny. Which I don't know. I I would like to make. I would. I would like to rewatch Raiders: of The Lost Ark. It's been a few years, that because that's the best one, in my opinion. Would we be great parents? I don't know. I feel like I would talk to my kid the way I talk to the cat. I feel <sighs> like we would run the risk of making a child feel stupid and insecure. You would, not me. I think I would just be like a very needy parent. Like, Did you finish that Dickens yet? <laughs> yeah, you would make them feel stupid. I think I would make them feel like, oh, I have a sick parent who needs to be taken care of. Like, I would make them do a lot of things for me. <laughs> So we would have Cinderella. <laughs> I think we'd have like Cinderella. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. You made me guess who Khalees was dating the other night. Yeah. I'm sure Bill Murray is like a fun guy to be around, but... You know, the, the only solace we can probably take in that is he's maybe not very active. <laughs> but yeah, what is she doing? I don't know. Can he just be your friend? <laughs> can Stop cooking, leave Bill Murray, and go back to making music, because that's how I liked her the best. But if she's happy, fine. It's awkward if your grandkids are older than your kids. <laughs> Uh, are we reviewing? No. Uh, Joseph dragging the cat. She knows she's annoying. Um, I need to write a book up here. <laughs> oh, so the head on film you're talking about is Australian, which I haven't seen. But yes, there was a film called Head On in 2004 that won Berlin. Did I just diss the cat? <laughs> she's a problem. She's She doesn't respect me. <laughs> That's how I would talk to my kid. Don't let me have a kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> We'd be fighting all the time. But I'd be talking to them like they were a stranger. <laughs> we'd have Cinderella mixed with Christina Crawford is the child we'd have. <laughs> don't tell me you don't want to eat what I made or what I bought. Oh, yeah, no. That I guess happen. you're not eating. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, talking back, no. I mean, I, I, I just, I mean, I didn't love being punished by my parents, but also getting older is like, I'm not, no. What do we do to stay healthy? Uh, I have terrible eating habits. Um, yeah. But I say that I think I'm very lucky and so are you that we don't have a problem exercising. Mm -hmm. Like every day, no problem. Like I don't. I also was thinking about this the other day. I don't make a big deal out of working out. Like I see people on Instagram. It's like, it's a full production. A production. Oh, we've yeah. known people who like, we people have lived in our home that make working out like a production. And it's like, well, yeah, if, if it's like a four hour process for you to go to the gym, then it's like, we have a patio connected to our bedroom. And I just go out there and put on a YouTube video and do a 30 minute workout. Like, I don't really think about it. I just know I have to do it. And then I think we're both really bad with sugar. Mm -hmm. 
But if we eliminate sugar, our eating habits aren't the worst. Yeah. So it's just controlling sugar. Sugar's the devil. It is. It's a, it is a poison technically, but it's so it's a a good poison. It tastes yeah, good. with Patreon, I don't know when I would have time to put extra special content, and I don't know what that would be like. Because then it also feels weird, like oh, so the lives would be in Patreon, but we were doing it for free. So what changed that now you have to pay? But again, other people do it, and I think it's great. I just. I feel weird about, I'll ask for a lot of things, but I'm, I don't, I don't want to, I don't like the idea of people having to give me something, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm too proud. Probably similar. In maybe we need a business manager to yeah. do all that so I can pretend I don't know what's happening. I don't know. Ooh, how American <laughs> of you. Mm. that's what we need we'll, when we get to a certain point we'll have someone taking care of all of it and i'm like i don't know i just showed up looking cute <laughs> if so gorney and janet ever did a film remake together what would you like to see them do together oh hmm. hush hush sweet, sweet charlotte <laughs> <laughs> uh they'd have to be probably something fantastical based on how they look i'll pay you guys to hang out with me uh he'll take you up on that <laughs> Probably. <laughs> if someone threw me like, a, well, I don't want to say that. Never mind. Uh, you can't even say what your favorite foreign film is. Well, it'd be like Piano Teacher or Possession, oh. which is in English, though. So, I mean, but does that count as foreign? We need to um, have lunch. Not Bears in Space in that parking lot. Yeah. I mean, it is a, we, I've been once, I think. Were you with me? No, I haven't been. Oh, yeah. I, and I go to Akbar all the time. It wasn't for me. Andy Warhol's Heat or Andy Warhol's Trash. You know, I, it's been so many years since I watched those. I don't know. I, I would have to re-watch to differentiate. Um, my only images are, are of Joe D'Alessandro. I'm outraged. I believe you liked Puss in Boots. Give Spider-Verse a chance. That's true. That's true. Actually, I've liked every uh, Pixar movie. You loved uh, Elemental. I cried like eight times this morning. Yeah, so I don't movie. think that it's... It's just, there's something about animation that I just, like, it doesn't catch my attention. You'd have to, like, force me to watch it. Mm -hmm. And then I always end up liking it. Okay, have you seen Rebel Without a Cause? Oh, yeah. Okay. I Jimmy need, Dean and Natalie. I need to wrap this up because I'm hungry. No, Roberto Benini, Roberto Benini, Life is Beautiful is not a film I like. What's the oldest movie you've seen? We watched... You put on that movie, that silent film with the lady who's like a vampire. With Theta Barra. They, yeah, what year was that? 19... Oh, it's, I don't know, in the 20s. That would be the oldest film probably. Uh, I think, I can't remember, Phantomas is the oldest I've seen. I, that's the nice thing about Letterboxd. It can tell you, I, I could go look, but something around there. A, a live stream from the gym? Oh my God. <laughs> the gym I go to has a lot of like the OnlyFans people there, and they're... I just noticed yesterday that they put up a sign saying that, because I noticed something was different, and I don't know when they enacted this, but whenever I would go in the locker room, they'd all be filming. Oh, God. Like, like it's obnoxious. Like, you can't even get through to go to the urinal. They're all filming. They're all filming. And then I noticed uh, the last few days that there was none of that happening. And then yesterday, I noticed that there are signs up saying, that if you get caught filming, you'll be like your membership will be revoked. Excommunicado. So yeah, that was interesting. Um, but good, because that's so awkward. Like I'm just trying to use the bathroom and wash my hands, and I have to like play Frogger around people with full-on video setups, like cameras on things mounted while they're posing in the mirror. And it's really awkward watching people do that who have no shame. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I'll take a selfie to be funny, like somewhere, not the gym. And I feel embarrassed, like, oh, God, I hope no one sees me doing this. <laughs> and these people don't care. They are full setup, I like, would posing. I would rather face the embarrassment of, like, a, a wet, smelly fart than <laughs> God but taking a selfie. to be fair, people think making YouTube videos is embarrassing, and I don't think it is, but... Uh, the Elemental Review, we'll probably film it this afternoon. And Joseph didn't watch it, so it'll just... 
Oh, you know. the bathhouse live stream. <laughs> oh, well, so you can see a bunch of cr uh, drug addicts. Uh, you, you see some things. I'm not being judgy. We did a podcast on David Bo, the Nicholas Rowe man who fell to earth. Probably a year ago now. There's a podcast for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we need to wrap things up. Do you have anything else you'd like to say? No. Well, uh, ta-ta <laughs> for now.